Hey everyone and welcome back to Daily Tuition. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about Delvin CSS Flexbox. We are going to understand how we can use Flex using Delvin in the React application. Using Delvin, you just have to specify Flex class with the HTML element and you are good to go. You just have to specify the Flex class and Delvin will do the rest. To demonstrate how Flex works in Delvin, I am using React application. I already set up the React app with Delvin CSS. So you can notice here, I am on the app.js file. And here is my app component. And inside this app component, I have the division tag with the text app. You can see my React application is running on localhost 3000. And I'm going to have this app title right inside this browser. Now, inside my app, you can see we have a function here. This function is used to get a random hex color from this function. Don't worry, this function is optional. It's just for understanding the div elements. Now, because I already set up Delvin inside this React application, I can simply specify here flex and this will initialize this div as a flex box. When I save the changes, you are not going to see anything because you need to add flex item right inside this division tag. So if I add here a div with 0, 01, let me duplicate this and let me specify here 0, 03 and 0, 02. So you can see we have three divs right inside this div. Now to see the height and width of this div, I'm using this get random function. I'm just going to specify here a style is equal to and in the object i'm going to specify background color and then i'm going to call this get random function something like this you can see this will specify background color to this first div let me do the same so let me duplicate this two more time and change this values let me get it off both these divs right from here i'm going to have here three divs the size of these divs is the width of this content you can notice using just a one class this will stack all this div one by one. You can also use here flex row class and save the changes and this will do the same thing. Whenever I save the changes, it will change the color of this division tag because React will regenerate this component and I'm going to have a random colors from this function. So every time when I save the changes, I'm going to have a new color to this div. Now this flex row is the default flex direction to this flex. If you want to change the direction of this flex, you can use here flex call. Save the changes. You can see now we have the flex position vertically. Now let me get rid of this. Now, what if you want to specify equal width to all these divs? You're simply going to call here a class and you specify class name here basis full. This class is going to specify equal width to all the divs. So you need to specify this class to all your divs. Save the changes. And you can see you're going to have the equal width to all your divs. You are not limited to only specify equal width to all the divs. You can also specify your own width to all these elements. So if you remove this pull right from here, and if I specify one forward slash two, then this is going to specify 50% width to the first div. You can see this will specify 50% width to the first div. I can do the same for the second as well and for the third element as well. You can see this will specify 50% width to all the elements. Now let's suppose if I change this to or say the changes you can see now i have 50 and 50 percent width to both these divs and 25 percent width to the third div so using this basis classes you can specify basis property to your division tag and now if you want you can change the direction of your flex using flex column class so this will just change the direction of your div we have first second and third div you can reverse this flow so you can start with the third div so if i say here hyphen reverse say the changes so this will just reverse the flow of the flex box and you can do the same thing with row as well so if i say here row save the changes and this will start the div with the third div flex comes with some amazing classes two of them are flex initial and flex one let's suppose if i get rid of this flex reverse and flex basis right from here and if i specify flex none here i'm going to specify flex initial and i'm going to do the same for this third div I'm going to specify flex initial. Save the changes. I'm going to have the width of the content to this div. Now, without this flex initial, you can still be able to get the same result, right? But let me show you the benefit of using this flex initial. The flex initial class used to allow a flex item to shrink but not grow. It will have the initial size first. So let's suppose that the second div have a width 96. It means if the second div has 24 rem width save the changes then you will see the result something like this but if i decrease the viewport of this 
browser, you can see I can shrink the second division tag. So this division tag will shrink but will not grow. With this flex initial, you can shrink the element but it will not grow the element. The element will have the default initial size. Now, as you know, this property is only going to allow the user to shrink the element. Let's suppose that you want to grow and shrink the element at the same time. Instead of using this flex initial, you simply specify here flex one. Save the changes. And now, if I increase the viewport, you can see this will increase the width of the element. And if I decrease the viewport, it will decrease the width of the element. You can notice. You can also use this flex one to specify equal width to all your elements. So if I say here flex one, something like this, then this is going to specify equal width to all your divs. You can notice. Now we have equal width to all your divs. Now let's suppose that you want to shrink your division tag when we reach to the minimum width. So let's suppose if I add here flex none, and if I specify here width 96, and here I'm going to specify flex auto, and width is going to be. 48 means 12 RAM. Save the changes, and now when I increase the viewport, we're not going to see any result. We are going to have the full width to the third element, and if I decrease the viewport, you will notice here when we have the minimum width to this third div, after that, the second div will get shrink. Otherwise, it will not shrink. You will notice here. It will shrink the second div. Once there is no space to shrink for the other elements, just like the flex, you can also use flex grow class. So let's suppose that you want to grow this last div. You just need to specify here grow. Using grow, this will fill all the available space and specify that to this third div. When I save the changes, you can notice this will specify the available space to this third div. And you can also prevent the element from growing using grow zero. Keep in mind, you don't have to specify flex prefix to the grow class. Because in Delvin, if you want to grow the element, you just have to specify grow. If you want to shrink the element, you just have to specify shrink. So this division tag will not grow because we specify here grow zero. When I save the changes, increase the viewport, you can notice this will not grow. This is not going to change the value of this second div. Now you can do the same thing with shrink as well. So let's suppose if I specify here a shrink, width is going to be 48, save the changes, and now when I increase the viewport, you can see it will not grow, but when I decrease the viewport, it will only shrink the second element when there is no space available for the other elements to shrink. And if you specify here 0 with 96, then you will notice it's not going to shrink. When I decrease the viewport, you can see. The third div is now not going to shrink. You can also change the flex element order using order utilities. You can use order class to render a flex and a grid item in a different order than they appear in the DOM. So let's suppose that you want to display this first div at the last. You specify here order last. When you save the changes, you can see you're going to have your first div at the last. And if you want, you can specify order to your div as well using order number. So let's suppose we specify here order 2, this is order 1, and this is order 3. You will notice I'm going to have second div on the first position, and then I'm going to have my first div. So using this order, you can specify any order to your flex item. There are different classes over here inside Delvin CSS. You can use any of these classes to specify order to your flex item. So let's suppose that if we have here with 96 to all these divs, let me just get rid of these classes right from here. Save the changes. You'll notice I'm going to have the div something like this. And now, what I want, I'm going to specify here shrink zero. So I don't want to shrink any of the element. So I'm going to say here shrink zero. And I'm going to do the same for the third div as well. And for this first div. And now, when I decrease the viewport, you will notice now my content is overflowing. When I decrease the viewport, now my content is overflow the container. If you want to stop this and make your flex box responsive, you can also use your flex wrap. Save the changes. And now when the viewport is less than the width of your flex items, you can see this will move your flex item 
on the new pro so this will just make your text box completely responsive now suppose you want to wrap the element or grow the element of certain breakpoint then you can use a tailwind breakpoint there are different ways to make your flexbox responsive in tailwind this is not the only way you can make your flexbox responsive you can also use tailwind breakpoints so let's see a very simple example let me get it off this flex wrap right from here and for this first div i'm going to specify shrink then i'm going to get rid of all the classes and then i'm going to say sm colon flex none and width is going to be 56 so what i'm going to do is after the small devices i'm going to specify flex none to this division tag otherwise i'm going to specify shrink class to this div just start that right down here i'm going to say shrink then specify width 96 and to the third div i'm going to specify lg grow so what i'm going to do is i'm going to grow or you can say take the whole width of the div when the viewport is equal to the large device say the changes when i decrease the viewport this will shrink this second element right and when i increase the viewport and when the viewport is equal to the large devices you can see we're going to have this class to this last div so using this tailwind breakpoints you can specify any class to your element whenever you want so if you open the tailwind css click on get started and click on screens you will find all your breakpoints here and you can create your own breakpoints as well so sm for small size of devices md for medium size of devices lg for large size of devices and so on so you can use all these breakpoints and specify your own classes to your division tags using tailwind css so using this technique you can specify any class to your div and make your flexbox completely responsive so i hope you understand how to work with flexbox with tailwind css if you find anything useful make sure to press the like button share this video with your friends subscribe for more latest videos that is all for now i will see you in the next one